Uh, I know there were a few uh, technical difficulties, but I'm happy that we're all here. And uh, we know that the purpose of us joining together is that whenever there is great darkness, great pain that exists in the world, it is the work of those of us who are connected to the light of the creator to do, especially now more than we usually can and do, to bring light, to bring light. Because... Spiritually, we know that all darkness that exists, you know, everybody asks the question, you know, if, if if God is good, which we know, right, that force that created the world is a good force. It's actually the only thing we know about that force. Miderech hatov lehitiv, that it is the way of of the energy, the light of the Creator, which is goodness, to only do good. How is there so much darkness in this world? And just as we saw this past weekend, so much pain and suffering and destruction. Where does that come from? Of course, the Kabbalists teach that this world was given to humanity for good and for bad. When darkness is revealed, when pain and suffering and death and the terrible things that we saw that occurred this past Sunday occurs in our world, it is because humanity has allowed for darkness to exist. So while there are things to be done on the physical level, for us, for us who are connected to the spiritual path, we know that our job is, in addition to anything that we can do on a physical level, is also, maybe more importantly, to bring light, to bring extreme light into this world, into the situation, because that's the only solution at the end. Most of us know that the the purpose of the, of the center is to bring the light of the creator into this world in such a way that all darkness, all pain, all suffering will be removed. Many of us know that in the 1930s, Rav Ashlag wrote that he sees the darkness that is coming into this world and the only way, the only way to remove it is to bring the light of the Creator into this world. And specifically, specifically through the study of Kabbalah and the light of the Zohar, which is the most powerful tool that we have for human transformation, both individual and collective. And this is and this is our purpose. All of our thousands of friends, Blana, who are joining us from all over the world, this is our consciousness. We, and I say we, I mean humanity, but all of us individually and collectively are not doing enough. Are not bringing enough light into this world that such darkness can exist. And this is where I want all of our consciousness to be as we begin this reading together, that we want to make sure first that we take responsibility. We take responsibility. What more, and for all of us, there is more that we can do to bring light into this world. And there is a fundamental teaching we've spoken about in the past, but it should be uppermost in our mind now. The Zohar tells us that the path, the path, the path for the removal of pain, suffering, and death is based on a verse in Song of Songs. Which means, until, until you and I, we, humanity, awakens enough love in this world, when enough love is revealed in this world, then, and only then, can we reach the state of the removal of pain, suffering, and death from our world? And for some people, that might be a big concept, right? But what, what are we talking about on a practical level? I heard a story from one of our friends just this morning, which I think is a, is a simple but beautiful example of what we're talking about. He was in the airport, and he was in the Tel Aviv airport, and he was feeling an awakening of unity, a feeling, an awakening of 
of love. But while he's on the line at the airport, somebody cuts in front of him, in front of him in the security line. And he felt such anger rising up within him. Justified, unjustified, doesn't even matter. And he realized at that moment, he says, what am I doing? This is the moment that the world is need, needs not just love, but extreme love. When we're talking about love, when the Zohar talks about love, when it says that what needs to be awakened in this world is love, it's not love to your child. Later on, most of us love our children and we can love them more. Beautiful. That's not what we're talking about. Awakening love when we don't want to awaken love. Awaken love when it's very difficult to awaken love in small ways and great ways. So, you know, sometimes we, we speak about it. It is important to speak about the, the wisdom. The wisdom is necessary. The spiritual tools are necessary. But what's their purpose? Well, their ultimate purpose is to bring an end to pain, suffering, and death. That is the promise. That is the purpose. The purpose of humanity, the purpose of the wisdom of Kabbalah. But the practical way that it must manifest is an awakening love. And the problem is, for all of us individually and clearly in the world collectively, is that until we go through and continue and continue to go through a process of transformation, our ability to love and to awaken love is diminished, greatly diminished. So if we understand that we're going to be reading Zohar, we'll be saying down to the clock together, we'll be living our lives. I want all of us to direct our work, our lives to extreme love. And what that means very clearly is find the ways you don't want to give love. Find the people to whom you don't want to give and show love and find the ways to awaken that. And there's no question that all of us collectively and individually with the influence that we have with our family and friends and those around us, we can reach and awaken light for millions, for millions. And it's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary. And with that, and this is something we were speaking with the Heber, with the teachers yesterday, in our connections in Sukkot, most of us probably know, there is a special reading every single day. And the consciousness, the meditation is that we are sending light, that there are hundreds of countries, nations in the world, but there are 70 angels. 70, they're called the ministering angels, the channels by which every group of countries, every group of people receive their light. And every day we meditate on a different group, a different group of angels, a different group of nations that will get their light. And I mentioned that one of the thoughts, the meditations that I have in that meditation is that I should have a greater certainty, a greater certainty in my ability to send that light, in my ability to create that change. One of the great Kabbalists, Abit Sadoka Kohen, says that while it is true and important, we speak all the time about the importance of certainty in the light of the Creator, it is as important to awaken certainty in our own power, in our own ability to create change. Every single one of us has more power, light, and energy to create change in the world far beyond anything that we can think of. There's a verse from the prophets, Im katan ata be'enecha, even if in your eyes you think you're small, you are meant to be a leader, meaning a generator of light and energy to thousands and thousands. If only those of us on this Zoom truly understood our power, there's no limit to the amount of light and therefore change that we can create in our world. So as we begin this connection together, in the wake of such pain and suffering and death, the purpose for us is to understand what my direction must be from here. And that is, as we said, first, 
אם תאירו ואם תעוררו את האהבה. Extreme love. And that must mean that we, we, every single one of us, finds ways today, tomorrow, to show, express, share love, not in the ways that are comfortable or that are natural to us, but in extreme ways that are unnatural and uncomfortable for us. That's the only way that we can actually create true change in our world. And second, as we talk about the tools, the need for every single one of us to be using the spiritual tools that we receive from the center to create the change in the world that we can and must bring, it's important that we appreciate and ask the Creator to give me and you and every single one of us a greater certainty and understanding, a greater certainty and understanding of my power and your power. And with that, use the tools. We're going to read Zohar here, and, and as I, we mentioned in the email, there's going to be 24-hour reading of Zohar, but there's a very big difference between somebody who uses the tool of the Zohar that doesn't know their power, and somebody who uses the tool of the Zohar, the most powerful tool that humanity was given to bring light into this world, somebody who knows what they can do. And that, by the way, is the difference between the great Kabbalists, those who are great channels of light in this world, and those who remain small channels of light in this world. To know, to ask the Creator to give me and you and every single one of us greater certainty and knowledge of what we can do, of what we must do, of what we must do. The negative side wants us to look at tragedies and darkness and pain and suffering and say, I am overwhelmed. What can I do? The Kabbalists tell us, no, this is the time to know what you must do, to know what you must do. And for us, those of us who are connected to the light, to the Creator, and on the path of Kabbalah, it is to understand that we must do more, that we must awaken extreme love. We must use the tools, but all of that with a greater knowledge of my power, of your power, of our power. There is the guarantee of Bila HaMavid Lanetzach Darkness will be removed from this world. Pain and suffering and the terrible tragedies that we saw and we heard about and saw on Sunday will be eradicated from this world. The only question is how quickly. And that is completely, completely dependent on humanity, completely dependent on us, on those of us who desire and grow in our knowledge of ourselves and our power and act upon it and act upon it. So with that consciousness, I'd like to all of us, if you have the Zohar Balak in front of you, we're going to be reading from section, I see it's here on the screen. And also, uh, by the way, just, um, I think Eitan is here as well. Eitan, after the Zohar, we're going to um, have a Anna Bakach, if you can lead it uh, for all of us as well. So. We know, again, hopefully with the, the elevated consciousness that we shared, the, these letters, these words of the Zohar, we are sending them to Israel, to all those who are in pain, all those who are in hospital, all those who are, who are being held captive. The Bezat Hashem, our collective light together, will bring a removal of that darkness, of that pain, of that suffering. Rabbi Pinchas Haba Azir Lemechme Brate into the Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair, who was the father in law of Rabbi Shimon by Yochai, was going to go and visit his daughter, the wife of Rabbi Shimon. The Havet Bemara, who was sick, who was in pain. The Haba Azli Imeche Braya and the friends, the students were traveling with him. The Havarach Abahu Habarach Bechamre. And he was riding on his donkey. 
Adhaba Azul Be'archa. As he was on his way, Paga Betrein Arvayit. He came across two of the local um, Arab people who were living there. Amar Lon Sabi Pinchas Ben Yair says to the two Arab men he, he meets, and he says, Bechakalda Itar Kolam Yomin De Alma. Have you ever heard voices, a unique voice, a powerful voice in this field? They say the truth is we can't tell you historically if there have ever been powerful voices here. But we know and we can share with you what we ourselves heard. In recent history, while we have been living here, there were these thieves, these robbers, who would not only often steal from anybody they came across, but they would do worse things. And they met this group of, of Jews and they were going to harm them. And we heard this great wail of a voice from a, your, a donkey, the Nag Trezima Zimna, that sent out a voice twice, Veata Shalhuva de Asia Bahu Kola Ve Okidlam, that sent out a fire and burnt those two thieves who were going to harm them. Vishtazibu Inan Yudayan, those those Jews that were there were saved. Amale Arvai. So Rabbi Bichas Benyer, after hearing the story, says to the two Arab men he meets, by sharing the story with me, you will be saved from others on your path today who are going to try and do harm for you. Rabbi Bichas Benyer saw that these two Arab men that he met were going to be in trouble that day. And he says, because of the story that you shared with me and you brought me joy through it, you will be saved from others who are trying to harm you. There's many secrets here. Bacha Rabbi Pinchas, Rabbi Pinchas bin Yair began crying. Amar, and he says, Mare de Alma, master of the world, Rachasha Denisa da Abdet Begini, you created a miracle because of me. Vishtazvun in Yudai below Yodana, and those Jews that were going in the way were saved because of me, and I didn't know. Patach ve'amar, Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair began, open up the verse and said the secret of the verse, Leose niflaot gedolot levado ki leolam chazdo, a verse from Psalms that we say that means that the Creator does many miracles that only He knows about, that are only for Him, for His mercy is everlasting, is forever. Kamativu avid kutsha berichu im nasha. How much goodness the Creator does with people. And how many miracles. And again, as we say this, of course, these words of the Zohar awaken Bezat Hashem protection, awaken Bezat Hashem miracles. And only the Creator knows about them. A person wakes up in the morning. And a snake is ready to come and kill him. And not even knowing the man will step on the head of the snake, the katile, and he kills him. And the man doesn't even know that his life was saved. The man doesn't even know that a miracle just occurred to him. And only the Creator knows the miracle that this man was just saved from a snake desiring to kill him. This is the meaning, the secret of the verse, that the Creator does wonders, miracles, only for Him to know. Banash azil be'ocha, a person will be going in the way, belist in mechak in the mikdile, and there are people desiring on the road to stop him and kill him. And somebody else comes, and they unfortunately harm him. And the first man is saved. He will never be aware, come to know the goodness, the miracle that the Creator does for him. Only the Creator will know the miracle that was created for that man. 
This is the secret that the Creator does these wonders, creates these miracles, and only He knows about. Levado avid viyada. Only the Creator knows. Ve'achara And nobody else knows. As I said, this section in the Zohar is very powerful and, and has many secrets within it. But our consciousness right now, our desire right now is to send the light of miracles, to send the light of protection to all those who need it, who are in danger, who are in captivity, who are in the hospital, all those who need the protection. And I ask all of us, as we said before, to join to the degree that we can, the 24 hours are, we have a great responsibility to bring much greater light into this world than we ever have before. It becomes clearer and clearer every single day how much we have to do, how much we have to do. And Bezat Hashem, we should have the schut, we should have the merit together to be awakened higher and elevated higher and higher in the knowledge of the responsibility that we have Bezat Hashem to have the, the ability to manifest that great light into this world so that the atrocities that we saw on Sunday and the pain and the suffering and the death that exists in our world will ultimately and completely be removed, Bezat Hashem. So I'd like to ask uh, Eitan if you can lead us in the Anna um, And I know also that Al one of our teachers, Allison, is by the Robin Karen. If we can have Allison, if we can have the Zoom of uh, the Robin Karen, so we can have the support of all the Tzadikim, of the Robin Karen with us, as we make this connection with Anna Bekoach, to bring great light to all those who are in pain, who are suffering, who are in captivity, Bezat Hashem, and that in our world, with the light that be revealed, the potential for darkness not only becomes diminished, but ultimately, ultimately, comes to an end. Reset. Ana bekoach yedulat yeminecha tatir tzerura alef gimel yud taf tzadik. This is the combination, the numerical value, avat chinam, unconditional love. We want first to feel in our heart this true desire to give, to share, to love, to envelop the whole world with the energy of love. To send this love and care to all these people, especially in Israel now, which is the energy center of the world that reflect on the whole world. Energy of love, energy of healing, We'll go to the second verse. Gvura. Kabel rinat amecha segvenu kaharenu nora kuf reish ein sim tet nun rasatan. The main force that blocking our heart, our mind, and our action to be to express the energy of love is reactive energy. Through this verse, we want to start with ourselves and share this light to the whole world. We want to truly receive the strength to say no to the reactive energy. It's always reasons why to judge, why to be upset. Why to be angry? Why to feel small? Why, why to disbelieve? Why to get hurt? But we want the strength from the Creator to be able to say no to that reactive energy that makes us connect to negativity 
and being able to say yes to in spite of all the reactive reasons, expressing love. Or at least try to express love. The third verse, Tiferet. Na ibo dorshei yechudecha kevavat shamren nun gimel daled yud kavshin. We open ourselves that. Every blessings, every light, every abundance, every gift we are receiving in our life will be used for the sake of enlightening others, elevating others, improving other people's life. And also is the time that we're also sending energy of healing. First spiritual healing, which is removing the energy of hate and as well physical healing to all those who need it. All over the world, but specifically in Israel, people in despair, in pain, in fear. We're gonna scan now the Combinations of letters that help us to connect and to draw the support from above, the angels of the day, for Tuesday. Don't have it in front of us. Be great. Here, here it is. All the angels which are agents of the upper worlds, specifically for today to bring light, to heal, to protect. Sending, sending energy of protection and safety. Fourth verse, Netzach. Barchem, Taharem, Rachamei, Tzidkatecha, Tamind, Gamlem. Bet Tet Reish, Tzadik Taf Gimel. The energy of perseverance that Michael shared very often. We do actions, we read Zohar, we do our own spiritual work, and we don't believe and feel that we matter. We need to know with total certainty that we are making a huge difference. The scroll making a huge difference in the entire world. The strength to persevere, regardless if I see results or not, or not. The light is much stronger than the force of darkness. Like the Rav always said, the way to remove darkness is to turn on the light. Hod, the fifth verse. Hasin Kadosh, Perov, Duvcha, Nael, Adatecha, Het Kuf Bet, Het Nun Ein. To open ourselves to be guided by the light, to hear the voice of the light, to hear the voice of our soul, the voice of certainty, the voice of love, the voice of what's the next positive thing I can do. And now we're going to scan the Tikkun HaNefesh. And in this time, we can actually meditate to ignite spiritual, emotional, physical healing to all people who need it. As we're scanning our body from the top of our head all the way down to our feet.
אנחנו נגיד עכשיו את השישה יסוד. יחיד יאה לעמך פני זוכרי קדושותיך י"ג ל"ל פ"ז ק"ז. זה הזמן We are thinking about raising the consciousness of the all world through the light of Kabbalah, the light of the Zohar, the light that can awaken love thy neighbor as yourself to end pain and suffering in the all world. Awakening the desire within each one of us to be part of Of spreading the light the teachings the consciousness of Kabbalah in the world seven verse Malchut Shabbatenu Kabel Ushma Tzakatenu Yodea Talumot Shin Kuvav Tzadik Yud Taf The strength and the power to have renewal of our energy, to have renewal of our true spiritual desire to grow, to share, to enlighten. And silently, the last verse. Thank you, Eitan. And I want to thank all of our friends from all over the world who have joined us, who have joined us for this very important connection. And as I think most of you have seen the email, there's a lot more that we can and need to do together, uh, whether it's the 24-hour Zohar, whether it's the uh, printing and dissemination of Zohars. Uh, please look at the email that we sent out. And every one of us should do something more, to be something more, as Eitan mentioned, We have so much more power than we understand, and we have a responsibility now to do so much more. So again, I want to thank everybody for for creating this great light together, but also Bez Hashem, for all of us, this is just the first step, the beginning, and there's a lot more that we need and must do. Bez Hashem, may we all see may we all see the the end of pain, suffering and death. in this world, in our world, in our lifetime, because Atashem soon. Thank you. Thank you.